News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. Now at noon, critical day of searching for two missing firefighters at sea continues. Sky 4, video of boats leaving Mayport. Six day of search efforts continuing for those two men. Search shifted to the north to off the coast of Brunswick all the way to Savannah. Crews, family members and volunteers working tirelessly to bring them home. Meantime, Brian McClooney's wife posting on social media this morning. She has faith the two men will be found. Here's what the post says. Know that I have renewed strength and hope in my Lord and Savior. I'm committing this day in prayer and worship. Right now a news conference beginning. Let's get the latest. Coast Guard, our uh, Fairfax Union President Ron Cooley is right here behind me. The Fairfax County Deputy Chief Rick Roach is right over here and behind me here is Randy Wise, the local 122 Union President. So an update for today, we have 100 searchers that are out searching from our operation today. They are, they are working out of Jacksonville, Brunswick, and Savannah. That, that's about 32 boats working out of those three ports. In addition, we have, we have about eight boats that are working out of Charleston, South Carolina, that involves about 50 uh, searchers that are out there looking from Charleston kind of to the south. Uh, in all, we're covering about 5,000 square miles today in our, in our search efforts, and that's 32 gridded sections that we've assigned each boat to get into. Um, as, as, we've been, as we've been doing every day, the, our headquarters is blowing up with requests to how we can help. And I'm, I'll reiterate, jfrd.com and help find them. If you want to help, that's where you go. A lot of questions are coming forward about the family and family support. The two locals from Fairfax and from, from Jacksonville are supporting those family efforts. They, have, they literally have put their arms around both of those families and providing for every one of their needs. I want to thank the community again. Without, without the community support, this would not be happening, uh, to us trying to find our two brothers. And their support is invaluable and, and very necessary. We got regional partners that are involved I need to thank as well. Uh, from the local area, regional law enforcement partners, regional fire department partners that are helping us helping us search offshore. We have state assets. The state of Florida is providing assets to us as well. And then of course our federal assets that are being provided uh, by, by the Coast Guard, the Navy and Customs and Border Protection. Captain, again, I wanna thank you for the, the, the y'all can't understand the monumental effort that the Coast Guard is putting forward leading this leading this effort to find these two these two firefighters and uh, I want to bring up the captain now and let him brief what what the Coast Guard is doing today so thank you sir thank you chief Powers um, I want to start just by thanking again some of our partners uh, the United States Air Force US Navy Customs and Border Protection Air and Marine and Office of Field Operations as well as all the way up and down the coast from Brevard to Duval to St. John's Jacksonville as well as our partners from uh, from Fairfax County who are here as well um, I even just talked to the uh, FBI spe special agent in charge this morning we've talked to the Marshal Service and one of the benefits the Coast Guard has as a law enforcement entity a first responder a member of the military is we have a lot of partners and a lot of friends and we're talking to everybody up and down the coast uh, looking for ideas equipment and uh, special teams that we can bring in to uh, to aid us in this search um, we did not find anything um, yesterday afternoon or overnight um, we are checking into a couple of debris fields um, and trying to relocate some uh, some areas where uh, we've got some uh, notification of debris but we have not yet uh, identified anything that would uh, that would lead us to believe that we've got the, the right target um, at this point, our search is becoming quite extended. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, we're in a race against time. Uh, we, we really are. Uh, that is becoming even more acute as we move forward. Um, I have an asset this afternoon that will be 120 to uh, 200 miles off Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, on, on a further end of our search. And uh, we continue to search south of that down to uh, the Charleston and, and Savannah area. Uh, but the, uh, the drift and the, the, the um, the Gulf Stream that we've been talking about now for a couple of days is, uh, is, is, is working against us. Um, and we've, we're still dealing with a current that's moving four to six knots uh, northerly, uh, which means every time I put a four hour search asset out on scene, uh, the water underneath them and everything in it has moved between 12 and 20 miles from the time they get there to the time they depart. And that really gives you an idea of the order of magnitude we're dealing with. 
um, where now some of our early search objects and some of the things that we were drifting from day one are reaching New England, and we're still looking in areas as far south, obviously, as, uh, as Cape Canaveral. So this really has become a truly extensive and massive search. Uh, we are out there now. Uh, we have plans. Uh, we have planes that are in aircraft um, in cutters that are heading out there for this afternoon, and we're setting up plans uh, into the evening. And with each one of these uh, successive search operations, we continue to evaluate as we move forward as to whether there's still a, a likelihood of success with search operations. And uh, for today, we're continuing along that, along that avenue. So thank you. Captain, how long do you think you will continue to search? So that, that continues to be a, a session by session. So every time we, uh, we send out our search round and we get those pilots and those crews back, we debrief, we learn if we've learned anything new. Uh, we do some follow-on investigation. If there's been debris or anything located, we get search assets out to that. Uh, we collect that data and that feeds the next planning cycle uh, for the next, several, the next layer of searches. Uh, right now, the last, the last known object we found is, uh, is approaching two days old which is the fish bag. And again, because of that, that's allowing our, our drift area to continue to expand in, 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 in almost every direction. Uh, so at this point, we're still, we're still engaged today. Um, and then based on what we learn here throughout the evening, uh, we'll start having to uh, have discussions about whether we can still actively search or whether we need to accept another posture. Can you talk about the debris fields, how many there are and where they are? The challenge we're reaching with debris fields, and as I mentioned this yesterday, is there's a lot of trash in the ocean. So as we're finding things that may correlate, uh, a lot of times our aircraft and our cutters are going back to pick up bags of trash, or we're picking up a styrofoam lid that, that may be three or four months old. We're finding things that have growth on it, for example. Um, that's one of the challenges with any large area search. So every time we get any report of a field, uh, we're, we're coordinating our air assets and our surface assets to get to that area. Um, and sometimes just relocating it can be a challenge because you can see debris one minute, it can move in a different direction, it can sink, and that frustrates the, uh, obviously, the search and rescue assets out there. But that's the constant handoff that we're doing with our local partners, uh, with our federal partners, with those people on the water and those people in the air. The communication is that tight, and as soon as we get a report, uh, we try to get a surface asset onto whatever, whatever they may have been looking at. And up until now, um, with the exception of the bag, we've, we've picked up a lot of different debris, but we haven't picked up anything that would correlate to, uh, to this event. With a lot of the civilian boats, they've been going 30 to 60 miles out. That's kind of what Chief's been asking for. How much searching is being done outside the stream, outside the ledge? That's where most of our searching is because of the incredible uh, amount of effort that Chief and other and partners have put into that 30, 60 mile range. I've been able to put most of our effort offshore. So my cutters, for example, are 65, 70, 80 miles offshore. And some of the searches now with aircraft are extending outwards, even up to around 200 miles offshore. And this is all based on some really sophisticated computer modeling that'll tell us where any likely particles will drift as they go north. Um, the challenge with that now is these, these drifted areas are approaching 250 miles and longer of, uh, of area. And that's what becomes the problem is at some point your statistical advantage from sending a dedicated asset versus just a standard patrol asset, they start to become the same. When you say race against time, can you explain what we're racing against? The, the challenge, there's, there's many challenges. And one obviously is just any person's survivability on the water. I mean, that is, that is one of the factors that we constantly evaluate. The second is that the Gulf Stream, it tends to not only move what you're searching for, no, uh, forward, but it also spreads out the possible area of search. So part of the time that we race against is by a day, a day after that, you start to reach a search area that could be 250,000 square miles. And at the point when you've reached that large of a search area, your opportunity to find something with a dedicated asset and your opportunity to find something with a patrol asset suddenly become the same statistically. So that's, that's the race that we're in, is that the area is literally becoming so large and that's why it, each individual clue becomes so important, because if we can't narrow back down, uh, we're only in an expanding uh, scenario right now, and it just becomes a uh, incredibly large ocean. And waking up this morning with that, the next 24 hours is going to be a critical point for you guys to be in this search. If by the end of today you don't find anything, will this be a turning point in recovery? I mean, we need to a rescue for right now. That's the conversations that we will have to start having based on the size of the search. 
Um, and again, what it comes down to is the likelihood of success. So as a search area be grows from 50,000 to 100,000 to 200,000 square miles, um, we, have, we, we, we simply have to have more information in order to send a dedicated flight or asset out to any given area. Um, our patrol assets in the Coast Guard, uh, we always remain ready, relevant, and responsive. We always have aircraft. We've always got patrol craft underway uh, between here and Maine on a daily basis. There are always Coast Guard assets on the water and in the air. Um, the issue becomes, can you still send a dedicated asset? And if I do launch that asset, do I have a place to tell them to go? And as the, uh, as the, as the, as the drift area becomes astronomically large, my likelihood of telling them to go right or come left suddenly becomes the same. How are you feeling today, Wednesday, at Changer's sixth day in this search? We are, uh, we are still searching. Uh, we are still searching actively, and we still remain with our, with our guarded optimism that today is a new day. Um, but, you know, I, I have to be honest that as we move forward, we're, we're seeking, we're, we're, we're moving into a more, even more complex environment and an even larger environment. And uh, it's a struggle for all of us. Um, every one of us from, uh, from Sector Jacksonville to Miami, I talked to my partners in uh, as far north as uh, Hampton Roads, uh, North Carolina, Charleston. Uh, we're all feeling it. Uh, this is a big, spec, you know, spectacularly large and complex search, the, the most complicated I've seen in my career. And, uh, and we are, uh, we're, still, we're still out there searching today. Is Thank you all very possible? much. Thank you, guys. Is it possible for us to speak to any of the union representatives? Uh, I believe Fairfax is, is open. Yep, and yep. ours is? The Duke of Berlin You've obviously been wrapping your arms around these families. How are they doing? Yeah. They're strong. They, they, they have positive energy. Um, unlike anything I've ever seen and experienced with this type of, uh, this type of situation. These, these families, they're close. They're supporting each other. And they're giving us the energy to help them. It, it, we're fortunate to have some, some really strong strong folks in our in our union as well that, that are continuing to help them. So what is we're, it like hearing time might be running out? I, I, here. Can show you. I mean today it's a little it's a different tone than even yesterday. I'll tell you, uh, speaking to the cats in the last couple of days, it's uh, been quite impressive yeah, of the, uh, again the complicated uh, search that they do have, but also the uh, the wealth of knowledge and, and expertise that they have in these situations. Uh, you know, sitting outside, kind of listening in, in, in your own mind, thinking of things that could happen. You step inside that room and you realize that there's absolutely everything that can be done is being done in a very professional way, very organized way, uh, from the Coast Guard to, to our members in that command post right there, day in, day, in and day out, figure, trying to figure it out. So it is, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it, it's going to make it tough. Right as time goes by, it's going to be a lot tougher. But uh, listening to them and knowing that everything is being done uh, gives you some hope that, uh, that, that, that there'll be a good outcome, but uh, we, we understand that there'll be a point that, they, that that decision they have to make will be tough. How are you having that conversation with the families? I mean, I'm sure they're listening to this now, but... Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't had a conversation with them about that. been positive up to this point. Okay. Um, so, uh, they're, again, the, the, the family support they've been getting is unbelievable from their own. They're, we have, we're dealing with up to 30 people at, at one time. I mean, they have just come from everywhere. And uh, we're supporting them, uh, getting to where they need to be, uh, especially those from out of town. Uh, Brian, you know, Brian was from here, so they have a little knowledge here, but uh, for, especially those out of town. Uh, the, our department has been great with giving us some stuff, vans, vehicles, you know, whatever we need to make sure that they're uh, uh, well taken care of. What is your ask from the community? Obviously, you got to set up this donations page, but we can see even today the, the people that came out is a little bit smaller. What are you asking from the community? Uh, you know, continue. Uh, to go into jfrd.com and, and donate. Uh, you know, we're, we're, our expectation is to is to, to fund some of these uh, air assets and water assets. We're gonna we're gonna um, try to help the public that have gone out here. I can tell you, a lot of them have already said, uh, you know, that's not what we're looking for. We're doing this, you know, out of the goodness of our hearts and and want to do it. But uh, you know, with the support of the family, you know, this it, it turns into a large operation. You know, we're we're uh, hotel rooms for the family, transportation, all those pieces. So uh, you know, if if, if you don't have the ability to get out here and get in the water, that's a great way to do is support uh, the, uh, uh, the fundraising effort that it is going directly back to the family. Randy, talk about that real quick. Obviously, you guys are 
you know, your land-based careers, you fight fires, you car wrecks, but this is a whole nother spectrum for you guys. How have you been able to kind of put all this together and, and still reach out to, to get folks to chip in? Uh, it's, this is obviously out of your element. Yeah, not those guys in that, in that, uh, in that comm center right there. Uh, Chief Barrow and Mark Roberts have been running this operation since Saturday. A uh, very, very experienced uh, uh, fisherman in the area, right? Go way offshore. Uh, great people uh, in, the, in the in the marine world. Um, so it's uh, <clears throat> it's not something that's out of the realm of their capability. I will tell you that. Yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not offshore uh, doing search and rescue. That's for our federal partners to be, handle most of that. But uh, they they rely on their experience. Uh, a lot of planning going on in there. Uh, the expectation of what's going to happen the next day. Uh, you know, in, in the fire service, it's, it's kind of what we do. There's an emergency. We adapt to it. We're continually planning for the next day. Uh, this one's odd from an aspect of that we're, we've really reached out to the public for help, and it's been an unbelievable response uh, from that call of help. Uh, you know, it has worked all the way into to North Carolina now. We call our brothers, the union presidents in Savannah, Charleston. They're mobilizing people, and they're on the water today. So this just doesn't go here. I mean, I think there's a great relation from – Virginia to, to Jacksonville, it's been, and, and farther south than that, we've had brothers all the way down in, in, in uh, uh, all the way in Cape Canaveral that have been reaching out. We had, they were in front of the families immediately. We make one phone call and there's a firefighter standing in front of that family saying, what can I do to help you? And that's happened from all the way down there, all the way to, to North Carolina. Talk about how fellow firefighters are doing. I know a lot of them around here, but the ones from the district are they? Uh, they're continuing to stay with the family. Uh, they have uh, taken over that task of, uh, of Brian's family. And um, our Fairfax brothers, they've flown in here, and they're wrapping their heads around them. So we're staying together. Uh, you know, we had a nice vigil yesterday. Everybody was together, uh, together today, uh, probably back tonight, and uh, all in the same hotel. So it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a real family effort. And, uh, again, just trying to, to keep their uh, hopes up and um, any needs that they have that they're met. I'd, I'd like to say thank you to the community. Thank you to the Jacksonville community, to the folks that support JFRD.com. That's what's really important there. But also important for me is to thank President Randy Wise, Fire Chief Powers, and the Jacksonville Fire Department for all the great support and hospitality they've been providing us. Deputy Chief Roach is here on behalf of Fire Chief Butler and the Fairfax County Fire Department. We extend a heartfelt thank you to everybody that's been involved and all for your positive energy and prayers. Thanks. Good. All right. Thank you all. All right. Let me talk about what's new here. You know, my job in this role is to provide some context and perspective. 24 hours ago, when we heard from the captain from the Coast Guard, he said, we are 100% in. This is 100% a rescue mission. And the words we heard from him just a few moments ago is now it's becoming a struggle. He did say that we are still searching actively but there is guarded optimism. We are moving into a tougher environment. The search yesterday was 60 miles out into the ocean. Now it's up to 200 miles out. He says that the Gulf Stream is working against them. He says that they may move from rescue to recovery, depending what happens in the next 24 hours, but they refuse to give up. They have 100 searchers that left from Mayport this morning. There are three ports that are working right now. You've got Jacksonville, You've got Brunswick and you've got Savannah. You've got boats that are leaving as well from Charleston. You've got federal agencies that are involved as well. The Coast Guard, the Navy, the U.S. Air Force are all working in tandem to try and find these men. Now, even though they're saying that it's a struggle, even though they're saying they've got to revisit the issue at the end of the day, nobody is ready to give up at this point. But there is a time when they're going to have to sit back and they're going to say, has this search area become so large that we've got to reassess what's going on and decide when we are going to go ahead and say, you know what, we can't deploy these assets the way we are right now and look at the way we're going about this. But for right now, nobody is giving up. The volunteers are out on the water. The Coast Guard is out on the water. They're trying to find these two men with the hope that they're alive. Our coverage continues on air and on newsforjax.com. We'll be right back.